Hey guys, in this video, we're talking about winterizing this Audi that is a maintenance client of mine for the winter, protecting it for the winter, but also how to top the ceramic coating that already exists on the paint and essentially winterizing the ceramic coating. Now, you guys are looking at the before images and video of what this vehicle looks like. While yes, it is a maintenance client, to give you a little bit of context, this is actually one of my, what I would call, irregular maintenance clients in that I don't see it a definite amount of times per year, but essentially every time I reach out to this particular customer, it is time essentially to detail the vehicle again. So I can kind of see it as often or as little as I want during the year. So it's a really awesome client to have. I have several like this in my maintenance arsenal. Now for a little bit of context about the paint, yes, this vehicle is garage kept year round. It is basically never driven in any sort of extreme weather, not even rain really. So the paint is naturally kept in extremely good condition. There was a Nassial NL272 ceramic coating applied to the paint about three years ago now. So I have kept up with this coating for the last three years. It is one of my favorite coatings. It's one of the longest lasting coatings that I think is on the market right now, especially just in my own experience. And of course, I will hook up that ceramic coating below so you guys can check that out. It is a little bit difficult to apply. I don't suggest it for beginners. Now let me get into what I'm doing here. I am going to be doing all four tires just showing you one of them, but essentially all I want to do here is attack the tires, the wheels, the wheel wells, the paint, the glass, the front grille, plastics, all areas of this car with the least amount of aggression possible simply because I want to preserve the ceramic coating as long as I possibly can, which is actually very, very easy to do because of the way that the car is actually maintained by the customer. So it is important to understand and it's worth really talking about in the detailing world. Ceramic coatings in many ways, yes, they have certain sort of date ranges that they're going to last one year, two years, five years by the manufacturer's directions. But even more important than that, the question as far as longevity and durability regarding ceramic coatings is more surrounding how does the customer actually keep the vehicle when it's not being detailed? Is it garage kept? Is it not garage kept? Is it washed more than once a year, more than twice a year, more than 12 times a year, you know, bi-weekly, monthly, bi-monthly, all of these things deeply affect the longevity and the durability of the ceramic coating itself. And yes, we do have a bit of a coating on the wheels, though that coating is much less uh, traditional in the ceramic ceramic sense and we actually are just going to do a spray coating after this. So I'm going to be stripping down the wheel, the wheels and the uh, wheel wells or the wheels of the tires and the wheel wells I mean and just for product reference I am just using super clean degreaser to strip the wheel wells as well as the tires and then I'm using Jax Wax Ultimate Wheel Cleaner to clean the wheels and the wheel barrel themselves. This is the Jax Wax, uh, I believe it's their ceramic shampoo actually but it's their foam soap ceramic shampoo and this is what I like to use on this vehicle because I get a lot of suds. It lays like I want it to on the paint. One of the things that you can notice here as I'm even just spraying the foam and the water and as I'm a uh, agitation wash after this, you're going to see how much the water beads on the paint naturally. Anytime the water touches this paint, even when the surface dirt is still on the paint, you can see dramatically the hydrophobic properties of the particular ceramic coating that's on this vehicle. And once again, it's worth repeating, it's been on here for three years. So even as I'm spraying the foam, you can see kind of how that foam begins to kind of uh, aggregate together. It kind of uh, maybe is drawn to itself and then it begins to fall off the paint, which is kind of the beauty of the ceramic coating. It makes every part of the washing process and the stripping process process so much easier and even more effective. So yes, foam cannons, foam soaps are extremely effective in situations like this, but really they're effective because of what already exists on the paint, not necessarily because of the chemical makeup of the product itself. Now, in addition to all of that, after I move from the foam soap, I am just going to rinse it off really simply. Once again, note the hydrophobic properties of the water. You can see those beads rolling off the hood, rolling off the front end of the vehicle. And then I'm going to do a simple agitation wash. And I am going to be using the Last Coats uh, shampoo. This is what I like to use on this vehicle. It's basically what I use every single time, including their follow-up protection, which I'll get to in just a second. So I'm going to be using a simple two-bucket wash method. I've got my 
my grit guards in the buckets. And then I've got a uh, little wheel mitt, or I'm sorry, a paint uh, washing mitt, not a wheel mitt, um, to wash the paint and agitation wash. And the last soap is really good on ceramic coatings. It is, de it's, it's designed to top ceramic coatings. All of their products are designed to actually be used on top of vehicles that have a traditional ceramic applied to it. And they also have their own spray ceramic coating, which I like to use when the customer doesn't want to pay quite as much. But all of this goes into this winterizing ceramic concept. One of the things that I generally do with this particular Audi and this customer is I see it basically once a winter. So while I see this car at least four times a year minimum, I'm never going to really detail this vehicle more than once in the winter time, simply because, like I said, the nature of the beast, but also this particular customer, it's not their priority in the winter time. Again, detailing tends to slow down in the winter time, particularly if you don't have maintenance clients that you can book out the winter with, and people aren't necessarily prioritizing the winter months. But like I've said in many videos before, people hyper prioritize, especially when they have vehicles like this with ceramic coatings that they do want to maintain and make sure are taken care of. They hyper prioritize the detailing before the winter starts or in the beginning stages because they want to make sure that as yes, dirt, surface dirt, salt, all that accrues on the paint over the span of about a three month winter here in, in middle Tennessee, all of the underlying ceramic coating, paint, glass, all of that stuff needs to be protected uh, before all of that dirt is able to actually accrue on the paint. So that's all we're doing here is winterizing the paint. So we're going to be stripping it down just to the bare ceramic that already exists and then topping it off as before. Once again, you can see from the different shots there the hydrophobic properties of that NL272 coating. Now, this is the last coats product called AMP, and this is a product that I'm using basically as a clay lubricant here. The reason why I'm using it as a clay lubricant is, like I said before, the Last Coat products, by the way, this video is not sponsored by them or anything like that. These are just what I happen to be using in this particular video. But AMP ends up being a great clay lubricant for cars that are ceramic coated because, once again, their products, like I said, are designed to be used on vehicles that have a traditional ceramic coating on top of it. So while I'm not going to be actually uh, clay barring the entire vehicle, there are just specific areas of the vehicle that need to be clayed before we end up kind of topping that ceramic with a another ceramic based spray protection I want to make sure that I'm pretty specific because going into the winter time, I know I'm not going to be seeing this vehicle for another few months. I want to make sure I'm prioritizing those areas that are even kind of difficult to see for the customer and they might not ever actually see them. But basically what I want to do is make sure that there's nothing on the paint here that has time for the next three months to sit there and etch into the coating and ultimately etch into the clear coat. So this is a, just a very preventative measure and I wouldn't always go to this extreme if I'm seeing this vehicle now next month, but because I know it's going to be covered in dirt, dust, road salt, and all the winter precipitation sort of things that happen here in Middle Tennessee, and I'm not going to be able to address it for a few months, I have to be ultra specific. I'm doing the same thing with this front grill area. I just want to make sure I strip it down completely. That particular area is not coated in the ceramic coating, so I am using a degreaser on that diluted about five to one, just to make sure that I get my brush into all those cracks and crevices. Once again, this is my winterization process because the logic is because I'm not seeing it for a while, I want to strip it bare bones and protect every part of this. It also makes my job easier when the springtime rolls around to make sure that all of these things were protected all the winter. So they're actually very easy to remove come uh, springtime as well. Now, that being said, the primary areas that are going to require special attention as I'm winterizing the vehicle is, of course, the first area you see me doing here, the front part, the front grill, these front tiny little cracks and crevices, chrome pieces, black, clear-coated plastic pieces, all these different materials. It's going to be really easy to address them just with a 5 to 1 dilution of the super clean degreaser and my different detailing brushes that I'll wash off kind of in between uses. But at the same time, you're going to see on the lower rocker panels on either side of the vehicle, driver's side, passenger side, and back doors well, of course, this doesn't have a back door. It's just a two-door Audi. But on other cars that are four-door, you're going to experience the same phenomenon, particularly behind each wheel. So behind the driver's side wheel, behind the passenger side wheel, behind the back wheels, you see this kind of kicked up grease. So that's where I'm cleaning right now. I haven't actually used the ceramic coating underneath the car. So where I'm, where I'm putting the brush right this second, you can see there's a bit of ceramic on those areas. But underneath there, really, really underneath the what I would call like underneath the, the, the paint that anyone would be concerned about or paint that anyone can see, you are going to see some of that grease grime kicked up. And so that's even another area I want to make sure I'm winterizing and stripping before we move into the springtime where I see this vehicle again. Now, some of you might be wondering, 
Aren't you going to be damaging different parts of the vehicle's ceramic coating if you're using a 5 to 1 dilution of the degreaser? Well, first of all, this is actually a 10 to 1 dilution that I'm using on the paint directly. It's also a different uh, detailing brush that I use only uh, for wet applications of what you might call paint that's in really good condition. So this is a detail brush that I rarely ever use, so it's not going to be scratching the paint. But, chem but ceramic coatings, uh, rather, are actually extremely, extremely chemical resistant, and so you can do different torture techniques and look those up on YouTube and you'll actually see how the, maybe not necessarily the Nassiol coating that I've used in this particular vehicle, in this particular car, uh, you can't see that torture test because it's not actually the most popular ceramic coating, but my point is you can put even acidic wheel uh, brightener, you know, Meguiar's wheel brightener on certain ceramic coatings and see it still actually maintain the full effect of the coating. And so there's certain chemicals, particularly alkaline basic chemicals like the degreaser when diluted at a heavy ratio, like I had 10 to 1, it's not going to affect the coating, but it is something that I want to use on certain areas of the car where in this particular scenario, there was just some grease and grime that actually needed a legitimate degreaser because of the greasy nature of whatever the substance was on the driver's side of the car. Now, after I've dried off the vehicle here, you can see what it looks like basically after stripping, after washing, after foam, agitation, clay barring with the AMP product. And you can see how shiny, how great that paint looks with the coating not only still maintained on the paint from three years ago, but also that clay lubricant. So now it's time to move into actually the protection phase. And this is where I am going to be using the last coat. Once again, I just like using it on top of things that are already ceramic coated. And so you can basically just see how little I'm going to be using is my point here. I want to show you how much much, kind of a little goes a long way. The other thing to really note here is Yes, this is an amazing product, and yes, the ceramic coating was an amazing product that I applied three years ago, but because the paint is in such stellar condition, it's in basically near perfect condition and is maintained that way, you can actually use even less product with vehicles and in situations like this than normal, just because it's kind of like using soft water when you're washing clothes in the washing machine. When you use really soft water, you can actually use less detergent because the detergent has less minerals in the water to react with and actually use some of its power. And so all of the power ends up going to cleaning the clothes. That's kind of a good analogy to think about here. When the paint is maintained in such great condition, when you're using great products to maintain it on a regular basis, when there's a long lasting ceramic coating on it that forces it to be maintained in really good condition, you don't actually have to be a stellar detailer to kind of get these amazing results, right? You can be an average detailer, but because you're working with such a great canvas, uh, the artist really looks good, even if it's not his skill level that's totally being projected. Even, you know, it might just be the, the canvas itself. That might be a good way to think about it. So this is going to winterize the paint, the headlights, the rear, the, the, the glass, the uh, plastic rear view, or I'm sorry, yeah, plastic rear view window. Um, in in the back on the convertible top. This is gonna this is gonna winterize the whole car. I actually use this on this vehicle before every single winter, and it works fantastically in conjunction with the ceramic coating that is already on top of the car. And then the very last thing that needs to be thought about in this particular scenario is the tires. Now, why am I separating the tires out at kind of a unique situation here? Well, because this particular vehicle is maintained so thoroughly and so well, I don't spare any expense with any part of it. And so the tires are in just as good as condition as the rest of the vehicle. And because of that, I want to use a very specific product here, but I am going to be spraying the uh, last coat spray ceramic on top of the wheels first to make sure that those are maintained through the winter as well. Now, the tire coating that I'm going to be using here is from the company Optimum. And this is just their Optimum, I believe their gel tire coating. This is not one that takes very little time to apply. This is a bit of a time consuming product. It's a bit of a nuanced product. This tire has to be prepared in a very specific way in order for this tire coating, sort of gel coating, to work properly. It goes on with basically a bluish hue, a bluish tint, and then it dries over about five to ten minutes, and then you can apply a second coating, you can apply a third coating even if you want to. I'm actually going to be applying two different coatings to each one of the tires, but just to give you guys a little bit of a time frame, this coating for all four tires took about 45 minutes to apply fully to each tire. So not 45 minutes per tire, but 45 minutes total with all four tires. 
So guys, that is how I winterize my ceramic coated vehicles. I spare no expense and I spare no sort of time frame because I want to make sure that these are protected as well as they can be throughout the winter time where I'm not going to be touching them. In addition to all of that, guys, if you want to grab my free guide to starting your auto detailing business for under $500, check out the YouTube description box below. That free guide will be available to you in a link down below. Basically, it's just going to give you the top tools and products that you need in the detailing industry to start your business and start making money today. So as we look at the after results of this Audi, make sure that you don't click off this video without grabbing that guide. If you want to see the tools and products used in this video specifically, those will be linked up in the same place below in the YouTube description box. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you're new here but you love content like this, hit the subscribe button. I come out with videos every single week, multiple times a week, all year long. So guys, once again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.